How did this happen? How did this happen? And how did these two super different performances make the career of this man? Walter White and how? And Brian Cranston. That's a nice jumbo meal right there. Brian Cranston has led a very, very, very successful career in TV. And it is no more evident than when you look at his career in the 2000s decade. First, he rocked it in Malcolm in the Middle, and then he took us on an incredibly wild ride in Breaking Bad. Brian Cranston somehow managed to be one of few actors that follow up the success of one TV show of theirs with another way bigger, yet way different, achievement. Brian Cranston played one of the most important characters in one of the funniest sitcoms of the 2000s. You are not a race walker at all. You're nothing but a common jogger. <laughs> then went on to lead what is arguably the greatest show of all time. Now, say my name. There's so much to dissect in the way he acts, so many comparable things in his characters. Traces of Heisenberg from early on in his career that I love to look at. I just love looking at the career of this man and seeing his hard work pay off. Brian Cranston can be really inspiring to young actors. It is fitting, I think, in this scenario to talk about him. Which is why today I want to do a little versus video, analyzing the two most prominent characters of his career. Hal and Walter White. How he achieved them what they represent in his career, and how the hell did this man act such drastically different roles so incredibly well. This is Brian Cranston, Hal vs. Walter White, shall we? Now, this topic is huge, and we have a lot of ground to cover. I'll do my best to break it down and make it understandable for everyone. The main reason I wanted to tackle this subject is because I was blown away by how seamlessly Brian Cranston transformed his portrayal of Hal into Walter White. Two characters that should be so different, yet ones that use a lot of the same mannerisms. Before we do any of that, let me give a brief introduction to each of these characters to anyone who might not know. Now, Walter White, the man himself, needs no introduction. He's arguably the most popular character in television history. Starting as a humble family man and chemistry teacher diagnosed with cancer, he takes a dark path into the world of crime and drugs, initially to pay off his medical bills and support his family. Eventually, it becomes an obsession, and he becomes the infamous Heisenberg, the descent of a good man into complete evil. In his own words, I liked it. I was good at it. Hal, on the other hand, is very, very different. Well, to an extent. Hal does start out as a family man, just like Walter, but he never strays from that. He loves his family and tries his best to take care of them. He's the fun-loving dad, and man is he fun. More importantly, funny. Super duper, incredibly funny. But he doesn't go through such a drastic story arc like Walter White does. He's the poor family man in the beginning, and he's the poor family man in the end. Hal has one true core feeling, which is fear, of course. Brian Cranston himself says that he tried to make the character of Hal the opposite of everything Lois was. So if Lois was fierce, he was a wimp. If she was strong, he was weak. If she had her shit together, he was always clumsy. And if she was controlling, he did not care. At the core of that is fear. Hal can be hateful, angry, protective, and violent, but at the heart of him is fear. Fear of authority. Fear of losing his loved ones. Fear of his wife. Walter White's score is a bit different, however. Because of the way he evolves as a character, he goes through a few main feelings to him. But at the heart of him, in my opinion, was always the same thing. It's what led to every single decision he made in the show. It's ambition. While his initial descent into the drug trade stemmed from a feeling of powerlessness, it grew into an insatiable hunger for more. Every decision he made in the show was driven by his unrelenting ambition. And right now, I'm feeling the need for more, and so I want to ask you to like this video. Thank you. So at first glance, as you can see, these are two pretty different characters, at least by the end of their respective shows. Cranston joined Malcolm in the Middle pretty late, as one of the last actors to be cast. The character of Hal was initially underwritten, and nobody quite knew what to do with him. But then, Brian Cranston stepped in and worked his magic during the audition with Lois. He created this brilliant contradiction in the character and everyone loved it. Hal quickly became a fan favorite because Cranston was the go-to guy when you needed something crazy done. There was nothing he wouldn't say yes to. Need him to become a figure sticator in two weeks? Done. Run around the neighborhood in just his underwear? Done. Put 50,000 real bees on his body? Done. They actually did that, you know. Brian Cranston might not be the most method actor in the world, as in it's not like he inhabits the characters he's trying to portray in his real life, but he sure is method in practice. If a character needs something done or worked on, he will do it, no questions asked. 
What's even funnier, Brian Cranston's first true long-term major role in anything was Hal. He was cast in that show at the age of 44. This man, who is regarded today as arguably the best actor of this generation. Not a very promising thing for young actors, but he is a man who was resilient and did not give up. That should give actors some motivation, hopefully. On the other hand, for Breaking Bad, he was called to audition for the role because they kind of wanted him. And, more importantly, he wanted the role. Badly. To the point where he even tried some sleazy methods of getting the role without being up against any competition. Even though these are two very different roles for very different characters, his method for approaching them was always the same. Take everything they do or say as seriously as possible. For Hal, this worked because, as Cranston explains, comedy moments feel a whole lot funnier when the character portraying the comedy doesn't see the funny side and are taking it as seriously as possible. It's part of the ridiculousness of the whole thing. For Walter White, it worked because he was simply able to understand Walter as a human, his motivations, aspirations, and weaknesses. Now, let's look at two scenes from these shows that provide a stark contrast in how Brian Cranston approached this character. Two scenes that can, in hindsight, look very similar from far away. Which is weird when you consider the circumstances under which these came to be. The first scene is from Malcolm in the Middle. It's in this episode where Hal is very bothered by this kid with a loud car who drives by their house at breakneck speeds. He's staying outside in his car on his takeout the whole night to catch this guy and teach him a lesson. Or something. But he falls asleep, naturally, with a cigar burning on his face. And wakes up to the guy passing by their house. He stumbles to get after him as fast as he can, but he struggles with ash from the cigar in his mouth struggles with pulling the car keys from his pocket, and then accidentally breaks the key in the ignition. Of course, panic ensues. A whole rage attack. It's like one of the funniest moments on the show. Beautiful. I mean, look at this. Anyway, I want to contrast that with this scene in the pilot of Breaking Bad. So the pilot goes like this. It's Walter's 50th birthday, where his wife has shaped his veggie bacon as a 50 on top of his eggs. Pretty depressing birthday breakfast for him. He's then shown going to his second job after school at a car wash, where he's wiping cars and he meets one of his students there who ridicules and humiliates him. Followed by a birthday party for him where his DEA brother-in-law asks him if he wants to go on a ride along to bust some meth dealers. He reluctantly refuses. Next, we are shown him at the car wash again, where he collapses and is taken to the hospital to find out that he has inoperable lung cancer, and has at best a couple of years left. He decides to take up Hank's offer for the ride along where he meets one of his old students, Jesse Pinkman, and ends up asking him to work along with him in this meth business so he can be able to leave something for his family and pay his medical bills before he passes. They find a secluded spot in the desert where they can cook. They get into trouble with Jesse's partners and Walt is forced to hurt them. He crashes the RV, stumbles out of it while the sounds of sirens are getting louder. And here we are. After he films a heartfelt message to his family and basically realizes that his fate is sealed, Walter gets up onto the road, pulls out his gun, and tries to kill himself. Except the safety was on, and this is what we get. Notice how the physicality, the panic, the rage, the fear, it all looks a lot like the same compared to this scene from Malcolm in the Middle. Yet they couldn't come from more different places, and were made to bring out very different emotions from the audience. The scene of Hal is clearly made for comedic purposes. Brian Cranston takes it seriously and does his job really well, but the situation is ridiculous and so we laugh. The scene of Walter White, on the other hand, comes from a place of desperation, a place of depression and hitting rock bottom, a place of someone who thinks they're about to die or get caught and have pretty much accepted it. It's a scene that's meant to be taken seriously, and it is. We feel immense sympathy for Walter. It's a very dramatic and overwhelmingly sad scene. I mean, it's suicide. It doesn't really get much darker than that. Yet somehow, Brian Cranston was able to convey almost the same performance. He made it work and made the audience feel exactly what was intended in both scenes. That's what great writing and acting can do, no matter what kind of show you are doing. Brian Cranston is one of few truly big actors in Hollywood that really struggled in their path to becoming one of the greats. Working day and night, odd jobs in small plays and soap operas, going through everything that is needed to get through for an actor to grow. And finally, at the age of 44, getting that one true big break. You can call a lot of people in Hollywood lucky. I don't think Brian Cranston is one of those people. 
And with that, I want to close out the video with a truly inspiring quote from the man himself in the recent episode of Hot Ones, hopefully to help some of you aspiring actors get through one more day. Subscribe if you like this video and enjoy. I often get asked by young acting students in high school and college, how do you do it? Where, where, how, do, how can I, uh, you know, leap around? And I go, shortcut? You look for the shortcut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, what, 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 <laughs> like a drug, ah, give me the shortcut, give me the drug. <laughs> I go, there isn't any, there's no shortcut. Sorry. That's what a, a, a real love of acting is, is, is it's, it's a relationship. It is committing to something for the rest of your life. If I ever start to complain about having to go to work at six o'clock in the morning or not wanting to do anything, I, I don't want to. Then that's the sign. I've, I've lost the flame and it's time to hang it up.